Hi, so in my last video I said that I would give you some examples of what to say to the uh, price objections. So here are some real live ones, ones that I've used myself and also ones that I've shared with my delegates over the years in the courses that I've run. And it's because of that that I know that they do actually work and therefore I am going to share them with you. Okay, so the first one, let's say the customer says, I only have a budget of X. You might say, okay, so what shall I cut out of the solution to make it work? Two, the customer might say that's too expensive. You would say, well, what might you be basing that on or comparing it to? Three, customer says that's more than I thought it was going to be. You might say, well, um, what did you think it was going to be? Four, customer might say, we can't afford that. You could say, can you afford not to have it? However, honestly speaking, it's very rare that I actually get the price objection because I do qualify my meetings well in advance. And I also make sure that I've built enough value into the conversation before they ask the cost. I also never leave without discussing the cost because the last thing I want to do is go away and spend time writing up a proposal for them only to be rejected on that one aspect because they didn't know what it was going to be. Now, that's, there's more about that on that previous video that hopefully you've already watched anyway. But back to more examples on how to handle objections. So I would say the first thing you want to do is you want to question the objection until you understand exactly what the sticking point is. See, if you don't question it, then you could end up going around in circles. Let me give you, uh, let me demonstrate this by using one of the examples that I've already shared with you um, earlier. The one where the customer says it's too expensive. So let's say you don't respond with a question. You might say something like, I hear you, but what we have to offer will save you money in the long run because. So this is where the salesperson tries to justify straight away without really questioning it. So they're justifying it by saying, yes, but in the long run, it will save you money. But then what that then will happen is the customer will come back again and say, yeah, but it won't save me enough money for me to lay out that initial cost. Now the salesperson thinking there's a challenge here for me. Yes, but remember that it is a one-off cost and the savings will last forever. And the customer might think, okay, you know, I, they're not getting this. So the customer might then come back again and say something like, well, we don't know how long we'll be operating that particular model. And this could go on and on. See, what you're hearing here is the salesperson is constantly butting back with but and trying to justify the what, what is, they're trying to sell. But the prospect is therefore continuously bringing up more excuses to back up their first or their initial objection. And what's happening is it's actually just becoming a bit of a battle. Now, if you changed your response from trying to justify or trying to handled by giving them a reason why they should do what they're doing or telling them why they should buy it and change that for a question instead, this is how it could go. So let's say the customer says it's too expensive. You could say, what are we comparing it to? Customer says, well, nothing. I just don't have that kind of budget for that kind of solution. You could say then, if you could afford it, would you take it? Customer would say, yes, probably. Your next question, you say probably, do I detect another reason or a doubt? They say no and yes. I mean, I'm sure it would help with ABC, but I do really need to discuss it with. And bang, you've got to the real objection, which was underlying. It is a joint decision. So what I'm saying, and this is just an example, it's not always going to go exactly like that. But what I'm saying is that by asking questions, what you're doing is you're helping to seek out if there is an underlying objection behind that first smokescreen of price. The route you're taking is to explore their objection and therefore by doing so, you do also take away the emphasis from the price and you're able to then address the real concerns if there are any. Now, here are some more questions that you could use when you're starting to come back from that kind of objection. You could say something like, well, what are we comparing that to? You might also say, well, which part of it are we looking at? 
You could say, well, how much does it need to be for you to agree to taking it? You could also say, um, if it were within your budget, would you take it? Or you could say, well, what do we need to do to make it worthy of your budget? So there's lots of ways you can come back from a, to a price objection, sorry, but use a question format rather than a tell format, okay? It is all about demonstrating your ability to empathize with what they're saying, with their objection, and your willingness, therefore, to work through the problem with them without losing your margins and without losing your pants. Okay, I hope that's helped. I hope you found this one and the previous uh, video on price objections valuable. If you have always, please do share to, uh, with others so that it will help other people too. And I will see you soon. Take care.